Hey guys, it's another awesome chat. Mike Sorg here in the lounge area here in Workhart, Pittsburgh, deep in the heart of Allentown neighborhood up here with me. I got a great guest this week from MetaMesh, Adam Longwell joining us this week of course you can check out this and a whole bunch of other interviews over at awesomecast.net uh, you can look for the awesome cast on itunes stitcher spreaker iheart radio check out the video versions on our youtube or facebook for awesome cast uh, where we're talking a lot of great people in the pittsburgh area and, and abroad in technology and businesses and startups and uh, people just doing awesome things around so adam uh, thanks for joining us here today well thank you for having me mike um so first of all metamesh I definitely got a crash course on it a bit. We talked about <laughs> we talked about MetaMesh on the Awesome Cast way back in the day when WorkHard was first starting up. But Josh brought yeah. it up when he visited us. What is MetaMesh? Yeah, back in the bad old days. <laughs> uh, MetaMesh is a uh, nonprofit that we uh, that started as an LLC in 2012, and uh, we reformed it as a nonprofit 501c3 in December of 2015. Um, and we build community wireless networks primarily. That's our primary goal is to build uh, the community wireless network called PitMesh here in Pittsburgh. Uh, it's a mesh network that is here in Pittsburgh. That's how it got its name. Um, uh, usually the technology aspect is a, is a bit beyond what people are comfortable talking about. So basically what you should understand is it's a community built public Wi-Fi network. So oftentimes, um, a community will want to have public Wi-Fi. It's a great thing to have in a business district. Uh, it's a great uh, novelty or incentive to have people come and shop. And uh, that comes with a hefty price tag. Um, Google just partnered with the Kingsley Foundation, and uh, they are going to put up, I think it's um, between uh, 14 and 20 routers uh, in Larimer. I hope I have that right. Larimer. Um, and it's going to cost about $150,000 to do that. And Google uh, or, or the uh, IT company that is going to manage that network is only going to be sticking around and doing that for two years. And after that, it's an open question. Now, there are some plans. The Kingsley Foundation has thought ahead and, and, and planned for you know what's going to happen. But that's a big price tag. And really, you have a situation where you've given those people a fish, but you haven't taught them how to fish. And so what we do for much less money is actually come into the community, teach people about Wi-Fi, computer networking, um, Ethernet uh, uh, building, and you know how Ethernet works, and how to install these wireless routers. And uh, we get them up on ladders, we teach them how to use hammer drills, we teach them how to think about this stuff and uh, you know turn them loose in the community uh, with our guidance and uh, we have structured installations so that they learn how to do this because it's really not that hard we do all the networking and, and configuring of the routers so you know we're just like okay here's the stuff where do you want to put it to start building your network and that costs much less it teaches much more and it's much more sustainable because these networks that are centrally managed often have the problem of, okay, well, who's going to take care of it now that it's out of warranty and they tend to go away. So we're trying to build something that lasts. You mentioned you, you, you brought this up with the term public Wi-Fi. And I know uh, if, if those that, that probably listen to the show follow tech news and know that public managed Wi-Fi uh, has been in news as, as far as uh, 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 some municipalities want to do their own internet, and that gets shut down. Uh, can you explain to me why that's you know been different than what we're seeing that happen as, as these public kind of Wi-Fi's? I think Pennsylvania is one of them, where the mun municipality can't really go create an ISP, for instance. You're actually doing something quite different than that. I just want to make sure we, we separate the two things. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple subjects there that we can right. talk about. Um, and I'm not an expert on all of them, but I do have a, a, a decent idea of how, how that all shook out. Um, I actually was in Philadelphia, uh, studying at Philadelphia University in 2004, when Philadelphia, the city, declared that they were going to have the first public Wi-Fi uh, network. And it was going to be awesome. 
Um, well, certain ISPs didn't like this idea and uh, supported legislation that allowed um, these ISPs to have what's called the right of first refusal. So if a uh, municipality or if a uh, government entity wanted to build a public Wi-Fi network or municipal broadband, you know, provide their, become their own ISP, um, these ISPs had the ability to say, no, we, we don't think that's a good idea. You, you can't do that. And uh, to my knowledge, I, I don't think there's any that exist. <laughs> I could be wrong, but uh, I don't think there are any that really exist. And um, most recently, um, I hope I have this right, the FCC uh, stated that these you, you can build municipal broadband more easily within if you stay within your municipality, right? But, you know, who wants to get all that equipment for, you know, 1,000, 2,000 people? Right. Um, you're probably not going to cover the costs. So municipalities were like, all right, well, we can just expand this beyond our borders. Well, the FCC shut that down. Um, I, I really want to look that up. And this, this, this is something that municipalities were, were feeling that they weren't being served properly by the ISPs, maybe not enough speed, not enough yeah. access, and they wanted to do their own. Yeah, it's a well-known fact that the United States has some of the, the slowest speeds in the developed world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you go to almost any other country and, and access is way faster mm-hmm. um, and way cheaper. Um, yeah, for the price of like one, one gigabit connection in New York City, I think you can get like 10 gigs in Tokyo. And and a lot of places don't even have access. To that. I know my father's out up in Mercer County, and he had, yeah. he has to get a satellite dish to because he was on the tail end of DSL, and it wasn't even much better than dial up at that point. Like that's like there's a lot of we have a lot of area. We have an area problem in this country too. Yeah, so. th- that is a huge problem. I mean, it's not like it's not like it's totally unjustified. Right. Why why the things are the way they are, but I think they could be a lot better. And then your service is differing and, and not gets around, but it, it, it's something separate from that, right? Yeah, we're not a uh, municipality. Uh, we're not a government entity at all. Uh, we're, a, we're a public organization. Mm. Um, but, yeah, there's no laws that say that we can't build uh, Wi-Fi networks. And you're, you're building a network on top of all that infrastructure that's already there, basically. Yeah, you could think of it as building a second Internet. Because what's fun about pit mesh and mesh networks and, and community wireless networks in general is that they're networks unto themselves. I describe it uh, to people as, uh, think of you know uh, a big office, uh, an enterprise, like a big office building. If the internet goes out at that office building, somebody unplugs the WAN port, you can still print to your printer yeah. over Ethernet, right? Yeah. That's yeah. still a resource that exists on that internal office network well that's more or less what pit mesh is like it's a uh it's a network unto itself that can have resources on it like printers but also file stores uh ebook libraries uh community announcement pages entire web pages it's it's the same thing as the internet just smaller um and more focused at this stage uh on you know uh community information uh uh, spreading um, and and local resources that often cost nothing to host and because um, you know most devices come with Wi-Fi radios nowadays you don't need a cell phone uh, plan to get access to these resources now of course we do have internet access on this network what we do is we have people host routers on their buildings and they either choose to donate bandwidth by plugging in a cable to their internet gateway or not. They can just act as what we call repeaters. They just repeat existing signal in the area out further. Uh, but yeah, there's free internet access on this network. We don't want to advertise it as a uh, ISP replacement or just free internet, but it is free public internet. It's best used when it's uh, out in a public space. Mm-hmm. Once you start trying to you know, move the signal into your building, um, it, it gets tricky. Yeah. <laughs> this is more, I'm on the park bench and I'd love to use a little bit of Wi-Fi. Mm-hmm. Like, and I see one of these uh, pit mesh uh, uh, access points come up and, and I was like, oh, cool, I can, I can get on and do a little bit of something. Absolutely. It's mainly for convenience in mm-hmm. um, 
uh, high density business districts or uh, you know uh, a public park or something like that mm -hmm. but it can also be used to really bridge the digital divide as well and that's something that we've really focused on uh, in the hill district and in other locations um, uh, we have just concluded classes in the hill district and um, I personally didn't have uh, data on you know how many people who attended our classes have uh, you know computers at home and, and who has internet access and if their neighbors do and all that uh, that data does exist um, and I'm actually going to be getting it this week but we had people who you know we were trying to organize these classes and we're trying to send out information <coughs> and they said oh well I can't get that I don't have an email address because I don't have internet access it's a luxury. It's too expensive. I don't want to pay for it. It's unnecessary. And people forget there are people that don't have that. Absolutely. We think, you know, what do you mean you don't have an email address? A lot Absolutely. of us that live in this kind of digital world. There's tons of people who live in 2003, as I say. You know, oh, sure, you can get Internet access, but you got to take the bus over to, you know, the, the Panera, the Starbucks. The library. You know, you, or the library, which is the big um, Internet hotspot in the Hill District. There's people lined up out the door when the library opens almost every day just to get on the computer, and they have to implement, um, I'm pretty sure they have to implement uh, time limits um, at that library. I know they do at other libraries mm -hmm. um, because they have so many people who want to get online. So it's, it's a problem because even if you go to Wendy's, if you go to the drive through in Wendy's, and that is a guilty pleasure of mine, <laughs> um, you will find little business card sized uh, apply to work here cards and it has a QR code on the back. You can't walk into a Wendy's and fill out a paper sheet for a minimum wage job. You can't do that anymore. You have to apply online. Really? And how are you supposed to do that if internet is a luxury and you don't want to pay the you know, 50 to to $100 a month um, for really pretty slow speeds, you know? Is it worth it to you? So we have this option now that is developing and um, where you can just kind of walk outside or if you're lucky, maybe sit in your front room. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you can just walk outside uh, or go to the, the barbershop or go to the Hill CDC uh, and just hang out for 15, 20 minutes and use their public Wi-Fi and uh, you know apply for that job or apply for benefits or send you know look for responses to all the applications that you sent out because you have to apply via email nowadays you know it's it's a huge problem where the more technical and more uh you know moneyed part of the world is moving toward technology and the uh there are segments of the population that are just left behind and they don't we don't think about how they're going to access it and we don't invest in those communities so this is a way um, to bridge that divide inexpensively without having to find hundred and fifty thousand dollars you know we're talking about twenty twenty five thousand dollars for classes and equipment so we think it's a really good solution um, we don't we don't see how anyone could could not see that <laughs> I know you had an audience with the governor who was coming through yes. a few months ago. I got to uh, be behind the camera on, on that. And I'm yes. thinking, I think part of that conversation is up on the video on the Work Hard's uh, uh, YouTube as well. Um, I mean, that's great. that you know, People have seemed really receptive to the idea, uh, even at that level. Yes, Governor Wolf uh, graciously came down and, and talked to us for about five minutes, was very interested. Um, you know, we ex exchanged some contact information, um, had some follow-up conversations, things like that. Um, he's certainly not endorsing us, but he was curious about the possibility. Um, so we, we're really happy to have had him there. So, Some technical questions here now. Like, let's say if I was a business right. that's interested Do in this. this. Now, now, when I think about, and this is my understanding, tell me if I'm right or wrong on these things, but uh, uh, you know, I know that you're carving out a part of the Internet uh, to share. 
if, if I'm doing the internet share kind of thing. We and are using some of your bandwidth, right. yes. Now, I attribute that to, I'm, I'm aware, and I think a lot of people will be out there of like the Xfinity thing where you can log into somebody else's router publicly mm -hmm. and you have a part of their bandwidth, but it's, you know, they have things like firewalled and there's been questions about that mm -hmm. security. So that's a big first question, security. I'm a business, I don't want people to get in my network because whatever I have on my network, uh, what are you doing to, to separate that? Yeah, that problem solved. Okay. We've implemented firewall rules that completely disallow um, access to the private IP ranges that are that are commonly used. Um, the only thing that we allow access to is the internet, um, unless you you want to open up one of your uh, uh, devices. If you want to have a, a service on the mesh, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, we, like, we say, say if I'm I'm a podcast, I'm a content yeah. creator. Let's say if, like, hey, you want to download my podcast, you can tap into that. Absolutely. Right? Uh, yeah, you have can a have a file download. store. Uh, you know, takes about five minutes to set up the firewall rules. and Yeah, it's just there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can go further and actually make that service discoverable, and it can appear on uh, a homepage that, or a splash page that we're actually in, in the process of developing um, so that people know about it as soon as they connect to the network. I want to um, say, because I know you're behind a lot of the technology and the networking here at WorkHard. I was just coming to Buzzy yeah. today. Whenever I, I mistype something, as I do so often, if you've seen my tweets, um, um, there's the best like internal 404 page I've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> for WorkHard Pittsburgh. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was our intern. He, he was really enthusiastic about that. It, it makes me dizzy. I thought it I broke like, my computer the first few a lot times of, it happened. It, it has, has a lot of... Like lines and numbers <laughs> flying at you, and there's and you're like, whoa! It's it's fun. It says, "Welcome to the router. We, the router we direct things. Uh, yeah. We direct the packets." Welcome to the router of uh, hardware. Or, yeah, work hard, Pittsburgh. It's a router, so it routes. <laughs> it routes packets. Yeah, it's good. It's fun. But but so yeah, so that's the kind of stuff you can do. Um, yeah. That's awesome. So like, what is you know what if I was a business interested, you know, or maybe if I'm a person, can I put this like on my residence? Absolutely. Mm. Now, we always encourage people to check their um, their ISP's contract. Right. Some ISPs don't let you share bandwidth outside of your residence. So we don't force people to do that. Mm. And we, we actually tell people, look, this is a choice that you can make. Um, you can connect this to your internet connection. We're not forcing you. Mm. Um, you know, make a decision that, that you feel comfortable with. Do you want to, you know, risk sharing your bandwidth to other people who don't have it um, to, to help build this network? Um, or, you know, do you want to, you know, wisely maybe not do that? Um, and, you know, we've had a, a mix of, of uh, results from that. Some people are like, yeah, I'm going to share it. I don't care. Forget those ISPs. And other people <laughs> were like, ooh, that's, you know, uh, yeah, thanks for telling me about that. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay away from that. And we're like, hey, that's fine. Uh, make a good decision for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's let's talk about where you guys are now. You've mentioned the Hill District, obviously mm -hmm. Allentown. You guys, I mean, you guys have a free Wi-Fi banner on the street. Oh you yeah, know? <laughs> so people oh, yeah. know. So it, it's not just like you kind of have to discover this thing. There's like there's there's some visual cues that you guys are putting out there. There there are cues all over the place. Um, so currently we have um, deployed like large swaths of, of, of stuff or will deploy large swaths of routers in uh, Allentown uh, Braddock where we have about 12 routers up right now and we're going to have 20 um, hopefully by the end of the year and uh, we're going to start in the Hill District now we have had pers or, uh, private uh, individuals just purchase stuff from us which anyone mm -hmm. can do at metamesh.org um, we have a shop right up there on the page um, but we're focusing on, you know, these large projects where a lot of people are getting a lot of good out of it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, we're going to be expanding to, uh, another location, uh, hopefully soon, uh, which we'll announce once we do that, uh, once we make that official. Uh, so, so keep checking uh, all their websites and everything after this podcast. Yeah. Maybe it's out there already. I Who knows? I can't publicly say it yet, but it's nearby. <laughs> it's, 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 yep. Uh, awesome. <laughs> awesome. So other than that, where can people find stuff? Well, um, you can find more information at metamesh.org. Uh, you can see where pit mesh is 
at pitmesh.net, uh, where right now we just have a collection of pins on a map, and that's where pit mesh routers live. But we're also going to be adding a heat map for uh, signal strength um, that we have detected through our own uh, measurements. Um, and we're going to be overlaying that on pitmesh.net so that not only can you see where the routers are, you can actually see where the signal is. So you can see, oh, well, that's just a block away instead of three blocks away. I can I could get on my phone and, and get on that. Um, you know, currently, it's, right now, it's nothing special. You know, this is PitMesh version one. It's just internet access. There's, there's, there are a few services out there, but you know, everybody's still testing their stuff. Um, in 2017, we're going to be um, developing or launching PitMesh version two, which is going to be backwards compatible and all that. But uh, it's going to have a lot more features and a lot more exciting stuff, um, mainly and, and hopefully some techie people's ears will prick up when I say this. Distributed computing. Oh, yeah. They're the... Uh, the I, I think that gets a Dr. Evil. The plan, yes. Yeah. Distributed computing. Mm. The, the plan is that we will have not only a network, but basically a computer that exists everywhere and nowhere on the mesh network Ooh. that runs all the services we need as MetaMesh. So we don't have to rely on you know, one route back to our server, it's just everywhere, and it just works. So uh, we're going to be talking about that and announcing that pretty soon. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Go check them out. Pit Mesh, Meta Mesh, of course. Thank you, Adam, for joining us. Of course, please can check Thank out you. more conversations, including uh, other ones we're doing right here at Work Hard Pittsburgh over on awesomecast.net. Look for the awesome chat and subscribe to the show wherever you like to pod your casts or watch your videos. YouTube and Facebook uh, is where we're putting those. Thank you so much to our awesome guest, Adam. And you. you have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.